Hey everyone, thanks for watching. It's Tim Clapham here from Hello Lux. And in this tutorial, what we're going to do is we're going to take a quick look at how we can generate thinking particles based on the collisions from our dynamic objects. So you will need Cinema 4D Release 12 Studio version so that you have access to thinking particles and dynamics. And it's going to be a very simple setup, but hopefully this will open some doors for you to move on and use it in a little bit more of a creative way. The first thing we're going to need to do is add in some dynamic objects and as I say I'm going to keep this fairly simple so let's add in a good old sphere. Most people seem to use spheres for their dynamic demonstrations so why not and I'm going to set this to have a radius of around 50. Next I'm going to add in um, a plane object and we can use that as our collision object. So let's just press R for rotation, let's just rotate our plane object around a little bit and then perhaps pull it down like so. I'm going to take my sphere and let's just drag this up above. So with the plane selected, come to the simulation menu, come down to dynamics and just choose create collider and that will add a dynamics tag for us and under the dynamics tab it will switch dynamics to off and basically what that does is it creates a collision object. For our sphere object, we're going to come to the simulation menu, dynamics, and create rigid body. And all that does is automatically adds the dynamics tag for us, and this time it leaves dynamics on. If we come in and press play now, you can see that what should happen is our sphere will drop down, land on the plane, roll along, and fall off the end. And there we go. So that's working as expected so far. So what I'd really like to do is make it so that as my sphere hits the plane object and rolls along at the point of collision and as it rolls along I'd like to create some particles and we can use this for all sorts of things and perhaps the most obvious is something such as dust and debris at the point of collision. We need to introduce some Espresso to make this work and lucky for us when Maxon developed Dynamics for Release 12 they included the addition of quite a few Espresso nodes um, and that's a great addition um, over the old Mo Dynamics because now we can actually access a lot of our dynamic parameters and features and events that are happening in Espresso and we can use those to drive other elements and that's exactly what we're going to do here. We're going to take the point of collision and we're going to basically use that to generate a particle emitter. With the sphere object selected, come to the tags menu, choose Cinema 4D tags, come down and add an Espresso tag. Now your Espresso window may open up floating above. I've got mine actually docked in my layout. doesn't really matter. Um, what we need to do now is we just need to um, be able to see our Espresso window and our object manager. And I'm just going to drag my sphere object in. We can see in the attribute manager that this creates an object node for us and it automatically links into our sphere object. And what we need to do is we need to output this object. So let's just come to the output port and choose object. We can then output the object that's referenced in this node, which is of course our sphere. Next we need to right click, choose new node, dynamics, general, and this time we're going to add a dynamics collision node. Now the dynamics collision node, you guessed it, determines where collisions occur in our dynamics scene. If you want to see where that's actually happening in your scene, we've got a few options within um, our document settings so that we can see that in the editor as it occurs. If you press Command or Control D to bring up your document settings and switch to the dynamics tab, Underneath here we have four more tabs and if we switch to visualization we can enable this and we can then see our collision shapes, bounding boxes, contact points and connectors. Now if we press play you can see we have these boxes for our collision shapes and bounding boxes as our sphere hits. Let me just rewind so we can see that again. You'll notice that there's a small black dot at the point of collision. This is our contact point and these are really useful um, if you need to analyze your scene to see how things um, are reacting and behaving. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this contact point and we're going to use that to create our particle emitter. I'm just going to rewind and just switch that visualization off for now. 
Back to our Espresso setup, at the moment we've got two nodes in there but we haven't linked them up at all. And what we need to do is we need to say which object do we want to analyze the collisions for. So let's take the object output from our sphere and drag it into the input of object A on the Dynamics Collision node. This node is now going to analyze this object and output information for us based on the collisions of that particular object. If we click on the red output for the Dynamics collision node, you can see that there's lots and lots of parameters in here. I'm just going to pull the interface up so that you can see those a little bit more clearly and without being cut off the bottom. Now it's great for us as 3D artists because we can access all of these parameters and we can use those to control other elements within our scenes. Now the only thing that I'm really interested in here is point A and what that will do is it output the point of collision. Now we have that information, all we need to do is add in a node so that we can um, create some thinking particles. And I'm going to use PStorm. So let's just right click, choose new node, thinking particles, TP generator, PStorm. The only thing I'm particularly interested in in this example is the emitter position. Of course we can access all of our other inputs and we can control those from our collision outputs um, such as the alignment of um, our emitter, those kind of things. But really all I want to do is worry about the position. So I'm going to use my point A and drag that into my emitter position. And that's it. It's as simple as that. So now what should happen is as we have our collisions, at that point we should generate particles. Now before we continue, I'm just going to come up, choose Save Incremental. Now we should be able to simply press play and see the particles in our editor. And there we go. So you may want to adjust a few parameters within the PStorm node. For instance, the emitter size. At the moment it's set to 100 by 100. Let's set that to be 0 by 0. Let's also set the count to be, say, 500, so we see a lot more particles. Now let's just rewind, press play again, and there you go. And you can see that as it bounces, it stops emitting, and then it emits again. Once it's fallen off the end, it doesn't emit any more particles. Pretty cool. So I hope you enjoyed that quick tip from me, Tim Clapham. If you want to see more tips and tricks, or want to learn more about thinking particles, dynamics, cinema 4D in general, don't forget to check over at www.hellolux.com where you'll find plenty more tutorials. For those of you interested in learning more about Release 12 Dynamics, then look out for my Learn Dynamics tutorial set which will soon be released at hellolux.com. Thanks very much for watching. See you next time.